I'm Linda Wilk, Director of Hands of Hope, which is a division of Family Service Society Incorporated. And we, um, as part of October, which is Domestic Violence Awareness Month, our group, the Mayor's Commission Against Domestic Violence, which is kind of collaborating or we're working together with also another local group called the SART team, Sexual Assault Response Team, wanted to do a social media campaign that would help people understand better what a domestic violence victim is going through. And we know how difficult that can be for a victim to come forward themselves, especially in a very public way. So one of our members found some videos online, and so that's what this campaign is all about. I am Samantha Euler. I am a multimedia journalist in Grant County, and I'm also a member of SART. Uh, and part of the beauty of this campaign, um, if you can find beauty in this trauma, is um, finding a way to kind of drive it home because it's one of those things that you don't hear about so often, uh, or not in a way that you can actually connect to it. But seeing those faces that you know throughout the community helps it resonate within you that this is happening not just to people in far off areas, but also in your neighborhood to maybe your loved ones. We really, you know, as Samantha said, we wanted to make sure that this was local stories. So these are people that have unfortunately gone through domestic violence. They're survivors now. It still is very painful many times. And we wanted community members that would come alongside and tell the story. I can tell the story, I've been doing this work for a long time, people know me, but it's important for others to see that there's people in the community that care about this issue, you know, and I know as part of each interview they were asked a question about how can they help to break the cycle and I just want people to understand it doesn't take someone that's paid to do this work to break the cycle, it takes each one of us in the community. We each have to take a stand and if we don't take a stand, if we don't care about this, it's just going to continue to perpetuate. And it's not just going to hurt adults, because a lot of times people think, well, it's just an adult. If they wanted to leave, they could, which is such a misnomer in and of itself. But we have to remember the children that are affected. We have to remember the neighbors, our relatives, our friends, our coworkers. We have to remember, even if we don't care about human beings and what they're suffering, then let's look at the pocketbook, because it's hitting you in the pocketbook every day. Domestic violence is affecting you. So, you know, if you can't understand why someone would stay, why someone would abuse someone, then think about the financial impact it's causing to our community and to our society and take a stand against that. Again, it's as simple as knowing who to refer someone to is the first and foremost thing you can do. We've got excellent advocates in this community from Tammy Wolf at the Marion Police Department, Natasha Geringer at the Sheriff's Department, Jenny Cassidy at the Prosecutor's Office, Holly Burton, Anita Carpenter, Anita Carpenter, Anita Williams, through Hands of Hope. They all care. Then, as more and more people understand, know about domestic violence, they can care. You don't have to save anybody. You just need them to know that you understand. And you don't even have to completely understand. You just need to let them know that Here's resources for you, so when you're ready to make a change, there's help available to you. The other thing, quite simply, you can do is stop the violence. Stop tolerating it. Stop allowing someone to say inappropriate jokes, to put someone else down. We have to stand up and say enough's enough. You know, hope starts with you and with me. It starts with each one of us in the community. People, again, don't think about, oftentimes, that domestic violence is more than physical. It's emotional, it's verbal. One of the stories, at least, I know that was portrayed during this series was a victim that said, you know, it's that emotional abuse that's far worse. I've had victims tell me that. It sounds odd. It sounds like, why would someone say I'd rather be hit if you just hit me then I could go to someone and I can say, look what this person that I thought I loved did to me. But that's not what happens. It starts with the emotional and the verbal. It's the put downs, it's the name calling, it's the you're not worth anything, you're fat, you're ugly, no one will ever want you. It's all those things that happen that whittle away someone's self-esteem and self-worth. So when it gets to that physical, it's almost an expectation. It's almost, okay, 
now I can show someone. You know, and then there's the financial and there's the sexual. There's so many forms of domestic violence that we don't think about, that we have to educate ourselves on, be aware of, and then more importantly, know that that's not right. And you know, as we teach our children, we have to teach them respect. We have to teach them what's the difference between a healthy and unhealthy relationship. A child growing up in a violent home doesn't know any different unless we have education in the schools, which we do through Hands of Hope, through Rosalind Turcott. But it takes, again, it takes each one of us. It takes Samantha, who has a, a wonderful opportunity through her work, to say, I'm not going to you know, allow this. I'm going to cover those stories so people are educated, but I'm going to go one step further and I'm going to see what can I do in my own life. So especially right now in October, um, because it is Domestic Violence Awareness Month and especially because Hands of Hope's candlelight vigil had been canceled because of COVID, uh, I had reached out to Linda and I said, well, you always have a survivor who tells their story. Um, if I could get their number, I'd still love to talk to them. Uh, and sometimes when I see domestic, uh, someone arrested for domestic violence, I'll go and I'll look at like the probable cause affidavit from the police department or from the court and see if that's something that I can help shed light on. And it's, it's a tough line to walk because you don't want to re-victimize someone. You don't want to make them feel more vulnerable in a community where they are trying to heal. Um, but also it's so important to get these stories out. Domestic violence thrives on secrecy. It thrives on no one knowing the full extent of what's going on. It can be very, very, very difficult for a victim to step forward. When they do, we need to be there to support them. So while we don't, again, want to re-victimize them, and so, you know, while we don't want the media to blast their name all over the place, we need people to know it's happening. We need people to understand it's not just something that happens in big cities. It happens in each of our towns here in Grant County. With COVID, and that's something that has changed so many lives and, you know, has done such devastation to so many people, it's, it's hurt us too. You know, people are home that were not home before. So abusers are with their victims more than they'd ever been. It can be very difficult for a victim to reach out, to know how to get out to safety. There's uncertainty of whether services are available. So again, another message we want to send is we're here. We're open. We're ready. The Flannery Keel Home, which is an emergency shelter here in town for victims, for men, women, and their children, we never shut down. We're ready. We have been doing extra deep cleaning. We've sanitized. We're staffed 24-7 with a secure location. We want victims to reach out when there's, it's safe to do. We know now may be more difficult. We've tried, you know, we have virtual support groups right now because being sometimes in the same room, too many people together is, is not safe for sanitary reasons, for COVID reasons. We know that it's increasing. We know it's probably going to continue to increase. Um, the Indiana Coalition Against Domestic Violence a couple months ago put out a statistic that I think it was between March and September of this year compared to March to September of last year, they had seen an 86% increase in domestic violence homicides. That is just sad. It's devastating. And yet, I can't say I'm completely surprised. Because again, the more people are together that are already in a dysfunctional relationship, already don't know how to deal with each other, and then you add that layer that they can't get out. So, you know, I just would stress so much that when it's safe, we w we're there for you. You know, law enforcement is there for you. Prosecutor's office, we have an excellent system set up for victims in Grant County. We just need people to recognize that, to be brave, to step forward. Yeah, domestic violence is something that doesn't quit, so the people who want to help you won't quit either. And I know, obviously, I can't do, I can't help people in the same capacity that Linda can, but I can always be there to offer a hug and listen to you and help you get to people like Linda. I think the, the probably the most important thing that needs to be per, portrayed is that there is help available 
there's, I guess there's more than one thing. There's help available. There's no shame in being a victim. It happens to any, it can happen to anyone. It doesn't matter how rich you are, how poor you are, whether you're religious or not religious, what your job is, what your upbringing was. Domestic violence does not discriminate. It's all about power and control. It's all about how can I overpower you because my self-esteem is not good and so I'm going to find someone, whether or not that victim has good self-esteem, I'm going to destroy that self-worth and self-esteem because I want you to know I am over you. I am in control of you. And so if I can help the community understand respect, if I can help them understand going back to the basics of just loving one another, we're in a society right now that's extremely volatile, I feel like, extremely violent. If we could stop that, if we could go back to just loving each other as we were intended to do, and that sounds simplistic, if we could just, you know, stop and think that each one of us, we're all human beings. We may look differently, we may have different beliefs, but at our core, we're the same. And so, you know, if we could just, and it sounds kind of Pollyanny, but if we could just love one another, things would be so much better. And for someone that you think may be in a violent relationship, again, just let them know about Hands of Hope. Let them know that services are available. If they're ready to report it to law enforcement, Tammy, Natasha, Jenny are there for them. If they're not ready to, or if they are, either way, Hands of Hope has services for them. You know, the important thing is that they reach out. And we understand, we understand that over the years, I've been doing this for 26 years, over the years, statistics have continued to say a victim will leave their abuser seven times on average. We know if it's the first time that person's left, there may be another time. That's okay. We know there may be a dress rehearsal here or there that they may just be testing the water to see if what their abuser has said to them all along is true or not. Will someone really care about them if they leave? Will they be judged if they leave? How will people respond? So if we could rally around victims and not judge victims, that's something else we can do that can be very important, very powerful. I'd say one thing is knowing that there are people out there, there are services, there are friends and family, and in case no one's told a victim today, you are smart, you are beautiful, you are just so many wonderful things that someone might try to convince you otherwise. Absolutely. Again, we've got victims advocates at the police department, sheriff's department, prosecutor's office. They're all well versed in the criminal justice system, they are there to be a support, to help you, to guide you through the system, to be there after the, you know, the case is done. Hands of Hope, which is a division of Family Service Society Incorporated, we have a 24-hour number, helpline number, someone can call any time, day or night, 765-664-0701. We have the Flannery Keel Home, which is an emergency home for victims and their children. It's secure, it has a, you know, a state-of-the-art security system. It's a nice, clean place for someone to stay. We have staff 24-7. We have a case manager that works with a victim, lets the victim decide what their next steps are. We have an outreach advocate, similar to what Tammy does, with the addition that Holly can also go to protective order court with a victim because she's not necessarily part of law enforcement. We have um, individual therapy available for clients. We have support groups right now that are done virtually. The most important thing for a victim to remember is all the services are free. There is no cost. It does not matter if they live in a million dollar mansion or a house that is not a million dollar mansion. It does not matter because the other thing is many times victims don't have access to that money. So we want them to know, again, we're there for them. We also can provide them with some financial resources. If they're in need of an attorney, 
we might be able to help them with a free attorney through the Indiana Coalition Against Domestic Violence. We have some financial resources that we can help them with. So maybe they're one step away from leaving, but they don't know where they'd get first month's rent. We can assist them with that. So there's many things we can do. We just need them to call. And again, we understand if they're not ready, we can safety plan with them. You know, it's all about what does that person want? Where do they want to start? If they don't know, we can give them options. But the bottom line is it's their choice, it's their decision, what they choose to do. You know, we want to be a support for them. We do not want to be what they just left. We don't want to dictate to them. Listen to them. Let them be in charge. If they open up to you and say, my partner is abusing me, just listen. There may be hesitation to say too much. Many times a victim will minimize to see what kind of reaction they're going to get. Will you believe them? So hear them, believe them, let them know there's resources. Give them our card. I've had victims tell me before, I've kept your card in my wallet for months. I've picked up the phone, I've started to call, and then I've hung up. Just reassure them that whatever they need, you're there for them. And what I try and tell family and friends sometimes is if it gets to be too much, then hand them off to us because that's what we're there for. Because we're not going to be emotionally tied like you are. And we can also help family and friends work through that process also. Yeah, I think one of the best things you can ever say to someone in need, honestly, no matter what it is, but especially in a domestic violence situation is, I am here for you. I want to listen. Um, so especially practicing like active listening, saying like, oh, tell me more, making sure you're engaged and you really are listening. And then again, if they're ready, referring them to services like Hands of Hope. Too often victims are told no one's going to believe you. You can leave, you can talk, but no one's going to believe you. And many times that's because the abuser has two faces, one in public and one behind closed doors. So no matter how extreme that story is, the key is believing, believing that what they're saying is true and letting them, again, guide the way. I am more than happy to come and speak to any organization. I speak at churches, at civic groups. I mean, I will come and speak to two people. <laughs> you can call me anytime. Um, you can call, again, the helpline number, 24 hours a day. Hands of Hope has a Facebook page. Family Services has a website. So we try and get education out in different ways and different formats. There's national organizations, the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence, the Family Violence Prevention Fund. Any more you can Google domestic violence and a lot will come up. It's so important to know, I think some of the biggest things to know is the different types. You know, the fact that at the core domestic violence is about power and control. You know, remembering it's not just physical. Remembering that it starts and it appears to be innocent. The possessiveness, the jealousy, the different behaviors that outside looking in you can see but when you're in the midst of that relationship you're not seeing it necessarily that possessiveness can be thought of as oh they really care about me they really want me to just be with them when you hear things like you're my soulmate and you've only been in a relationship for a few weeks that's usually a sign that you need to probably run the other way it's not a positive um, so you know I'm again we Hands of Hope, I have a staff person in the schools K through 12 because we know we have to start young. She also does early head start, head start from time to time. Parents need to be educated. Parents need to know what to look for. Parents need to have those conversations with their children, with their teenagers. And if a parent doesn't feel comfortable, that's okay. Then connect them to someone that does. Find a youth group. Find somebody that they can relate to and let that person know, you know, I know I need to have this conversation, but I don't know how to start the conversation. And let them do that. That can be really powerful too and important. Yeah, it's all about getting the ball rolling. Um, 
you might feel that some of these things inside aren't right, but you're never going to know what some of those telltale signs are unless you actually take the time to actively look. Um, Hands of Hope, once a month through Family Service Society, which is our parent organization, we do what the um, agency calls check up, ch a checkup from the neck up. And it's intended to be kind of a, let's think about mental health, let's make sure that people, the community understand services that are available to them. So again, October being Domestic Violence Awareness Month, I pulled my key staff together. So I have Anita Williams, who is our manager of our Flannery Keel home, Holly Burton, who's our outreach advocate here in Grant County, and then we also serve Wabash County. So I had Heidi Vandermark, also part of the video with myself, to let people know again what services are available. Unfortunately, with COVID, <laughs> we were masked, so it's a little more difficult for people to see exactly who it is that they're reaching out to. But the intent was, again, hope starts with me, and I'm there for you, and I'm available to you, and I believe you, I hear you, I care about you, I want you to know that Hands of Hope is just a phone call away, that you know we want to be that resource for you. We want to connect you and link you. We don't know everything there is about the criminal justice system as well as, again, Tammy or Natasha might know. So we're gonna make that referral. We're gonna, if you need us to walk you to the police department, we're gonna do that, you know, whatever it is. If it's housing, if it's needing food, if it's needing insurance, you know, whatever that need is, we're gonna make sure that we're linking you to those resources. Because the other thing we know is if a victim can be self-sufficient and their mental health, I mean, I will say, I think having mental health services is probably one of the best things we could add to our services, array of services. We've always been part of a counseling agency, but we haven't always had access free counseling available until we were able to get, secure some funding for that. So if we can help them physically, if we can help them financially, and we can help them emotionally, then many times we're much more successful in being able to help them thrive, not just leave that abusive relationship, but actually thrive and be self-sufficient. And that ties back to why should someone care? Because if we have someone that goes from a victim to survivor, they're now a productive person in the society. They're not someone that isn't able to work because their abuser is constantly berating them and belittling them and so they can't function at work. They can go back to being that person that they've always known they can be because it goes back to we need to instill in them that we believe in them and then they can be maybe who knows the next mayor, the next governor. They can be that person that they've always known that they can be. They just need that extra support and someone caring for them. So in Grant County, there's two in my work, and so I'm very selfish about, about priorities. Domestic violence, sexual violence are two key areas that I do work with. And so as a community person, I have always tried to bring people together to focus on those areas. And for a number of years, we were very strong in the area of domestic violence, making sure that services were available and not always as strong in sexual assault. And um, we recently revamped or recreated, revived the sexual assault response team, brought that group back together. Um, I have to give a lot of credit to Chief Haley. Honestly, between her and Tammy, that's the reason we did this project today or have done this project. And it's very powerful, it's very important. Samantha is on our sexual assault response team we know sexual assaults are happening in Grant County. We're not seeing them reported. We're not so concerned about them reporting to law enforcement. We want that. We absolutely want the attacker, the abuser, to be held accountable. But we are as much concerned about their well-being. Sexual assault, just like domestic violence, can be extremely devastating. And so we want to make sure that when a victim chooses to come forward, and we're hopeful that they will, that we as a system are prepared. So we have most recently taken a local case 
that Jared Marks, our deputy prosecutor in, here in Grant County, is walking us through to say, how did law enforcement do? And not to berate, not to judge law enforcement, but again, as a system, you know, was there other things we should have, could have done? Always wanting to be as best as we can for victims, for the community. So it's been, I think, very beneficial and helpful to understand everyone's role and what can we do better. So I'm, I'm excited to see that coming together, to see the focus, the dual focus on domestic violence and sexual violence. In April, which is Sexual Assault Awareness Month, we'll be doing the, a campaign we tried to do last year, and because of COVID, we had to go virtual with it. And so I'm looking forward to a What Were You Wearing campaign that we can, again, debunk some myths about sexual violence. And then we'll also be sharing some stories from survivors of sexual assault, myself included in that. And I think that's one thing that I'm very happy about being on this uh, team for is to share my own experience because I know when I was going through it, I felt like I was in a black hole and like no one could understand what was happening. So I'm really happy to be able to offer that sort of perspective and maybe help some people who have gone through that. You know, what I really want to do is thank everyone that was a part of this project. From the very brave survivors that were willing to be vulnerable and share their stories, to each of the community members who we really didn't give a lot of information to, who very, again, very bravely and passionately were willing to read the story and share with the community to stand up and say, domestic violence is not okay. I want to be a part of this. I want to help the community see that we've got to take a stand. We've got to stop the violence. And it can stop now. We can make that change. 2020 has been a terrible year. We want to, most people want to erase 2020. What if we erase domestic violence and sexual violence right along with 2020?